events recently that I went to. Uh, one of my local elementary schools said, you know, I was talking to a uh, principal. Turns out she is a Joe alumni. So you just never know. As Mark said, one in a thousand, you never know. You've got, you know, more than a few thousand people in the Bay Area and then in San Francisco. So you could be talking to somebody who's also a fellow alumni. Uh, again, not just the organization, she can related academics, artists. You know, we're in an international city and we're in an international area. And of course, to maintain your ties with Japan, yes, you know, Japanese people too, and lots of Japanese organizations. So these are all the cool people that you can meet. So let me turn this back over to Mark. Thank you, Arisa. And so uh, the final reason why you should join, and uh, this may be the best reason, is to have fun. And you can see we have this wide range of, of activities um, in many different areas, education, cultural, rec recreation, career development, networking, uh, and here's just some examples. So uh, those are, in a nutshell, kind of what you can get out of JET. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Xander uh, to talk a little bit about what you can do for us. So, Xander. All right. Um, so, how can I get involved? Right, that's kind of the big question that we uh, are all asking. Well, all right. So if you're an alumni, um, whether you like it or not, uh, the question is not do you want to join. The question is do you want to participate. Um, so there are a bunch of different things you can do. Uh, the first is you can help organize uh, a already existing JDA event or initiative. Um, so uh, on the left here are kind of some of our our uh, initiatives or events that we are currently doing. Um, we have the Career Networking and Forum that I believe is going to be coming up in February. Um, we have a Kabuki Club that meets fairly regularly that's um, led by Mark, and I believe Mark will talk a little bit more about that later. We have a book club that I think also meets almost bi-monthly or so, some around there. Um, we have our Shinenkai, our Bonenkai, um, that hopefully uh, you guys are, are going to be attending. Um, we have monthly networking nomikais. Right now, I believe it's the first Thursday for San Francisco, the second Thursday for the South Bay, and the third Thursday for the East Bay of every month. Um, and actually, the East Bay has been really kicking San Francisco's butts on that um, for attendance rates. So uh, I like to see people in San Francisco come out more um, for that. Um, the consulate offers Japanese classes to uh, JET alumni. So um, I just sent out the email for our intermediate and advanced uh, Japanese language um, class. Um, that's completely free. Uh, and you can come over here, it will be held uh, here. Um, that'll be starting in January. Uh, we also just finished our JLBT uh, class um, for JLBT N1 that was free for people. Um, we have a Hanami uh, spring picnic and a summer barbecue. Uh, and we do various events with other local organizations. So. Um, that's currently some of the stuff we do right now. And if there's something that you want to become um, you know, an organizer for, um, definitely reach out to us because we're always looking for help to um, figure out um, you know, like a venue or time or um, you know, coordinate with people. Um, so you can help out with something that's already uh, established. Um, there are volunteer opportunities at uh, other local Japan-related events. So for example, the Northern California Cherry Blossom Festival is really big. The Bonodori uh, that go uh, on around the Bay Area. We have the J Pop <coughs> Festival, the Homachi Street Fair, uh, Japan Expo, Visit Japan, Otsukimi, Mochitsuki, and Koromo no Hi, um, and lots of other events that, because JET alumni are in every Japanese organization and they're on these boards of directors that lead these um, programs, we can definitely volunteer and, and help out at those events. Um, and that's a great way to, to tell people about the JET program that might not know otherwise. You can become a liaison to a Japanese-related organization. Um, so uh, there are, you know, this is just a few of the, the many, many Japanese-related organizations here in the Bay Area. Um, you know, we, uh, I think Mark can mention a bit more later on about um, maybe some people in specific, but um, if you happen to uh, you know, be a part of, of another Japanese-related group, you can be a liaison for that in the JAA. Um, you know, I'm sure if we found, uh, if we talked to people at all these different um, organizations, we'd find at least one JET alumni, if not more. Um, and so to be somebody as, as our outreach you know, coordinator for a certain 
um, organization, that can really be uh, beneficial, and, and that's a, a you know good way to get involved. Um, you can assist the JET program. You can help me out, do my job. Um, so uh, we do. We need JET alumni for recruiting. So um, I have people help me for uh, when uh, this last fall when I went up to a couple different universities. Um, people do recruitment on my behalf uh, in places I can't go to, uh, like up in Chico um, or down south. Or um, this year I got to go to Nevada, but in other years when I can't go, we use uh, Nevada uh, you know, Nevada jets. Um, for bigger events as well, like UC Davis is a really big uh, uh, career uh, recruiting event. Um, I try to get some Dell alumni to come help me with that. Uh, and of course, you know, on your own account, you can talk to people that you know, your cousins, your friends, family, um, coworkers, and tell them, hey, you know, the JET program applications are up. Um, you should really apply. Um, the JET interviews, those will be coming up in February. Uh, personally, I'm not still really sure exactly how I'm supposed to organize all that. <laughs> I'm still, that's, I'm still my first, first part, uh, first time through this, so uh, I'm uh, figuring all that out. But um, generally, about a third of the interviewers uh, are JET alumni um, that we need to, to you know, be on the panel. Um, we have our alumni-led orientation that happens um, closer to summertime. Um, that's, uh, as the pedal says, it's all alumni. Um, we held it here. Um, the past couple of years, we're going to be moving actually, um, so we don't have it here. I don't know where we're going to have it this next year, but um, there was about a dozen or so alumni that, um, for a day, presented on different topics to the outbound jets. Um, that's a great way to get involved. Uh, we have a pre-departure orientation as well um, that you can volunteer at, and then also um, kind of re-entry, so helping uh, the new jets who just came back um, from either Japan or who have moved into the area to you know, readjust back to, to lifestyle uh, in America. Uh, and really the, the most fun thing I think is to create your own event. Um, so we, Mark and I were just at the, uh, the Jet AA um, national meeting uh, in Minneapolis. Um, and at the, the last day, every chapter came up and talked a little bit about um, different events that their chapter puts on that are really uh, popular. And they had some great ideas. So I put up some on the left-hand side that I really like. There's a Nihongo Dake dinner, where if you don't know what that means, you probably don't want to come. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was a great idea. Uh, Japanese movie night. Um, I like the idea of a sort of a, they call it jet talks, or basically like a TEDx jet kind of thing, where we can find people um, Hopefully, jet alumni that know a lot about a certain area in Japan, we can kind of have you know presenters come in and discuss uh, more academic topics. Um, you know, we can do our own Indokai Sports Festival. Um, a lot of other programs or other chapters put on their own matsuri. So um, I don't know if you've been to the, the Japanese matsuris here in San Francisco. Um, personally, I don't think they're very authentic, um, but uh, we can do our own kind of actual authentic matsuri with mochitsuki. Um, one of the groups has a mochi maker, so they make mochi. Um, we can, I have a taiyaki maker, we can do all sorts of you know, food, and we kind of put on our own actual matsuri. Um, one of the other chapters is an Iron Chef cook-off, um, where they've made um, interesting combinations like pizza gyoza um, and other cool stuff. Uh, I really like the idea from New York of a yukata bar crawl. Um, so uh, obviously the weather is not really permitting right now, but uh, maybe in, in the spring or summer, put on a yukata or jinbe and just go hit up a couple of bars around here. Um, that's a great way to get people to you know come over and ask, well, what's going on? Like, why, why are you guys wearing this? And oh, we're all Jet alumni. Jet, what's that? And you know, we can tell them about the Jet program. Um, a karaoke club would be fun. Um, Japanese classes for the public. One of the other chapters uh, every month, I think, or every other couple of weeks, they. Um, in the library, they just have a free basic Japanese class for anybody that's interested. Um, it's a great way just to give back to the community um, for people who like to learn a little bit about Japan. Um, you can uh, you know, talk to people over at AJET. Um, we can do uh, hiking, skiing, camping trips. One of the other chapters has a really uh, popular hiking, uh, you know, JDA hiking group, um, Las Vegas road trip, you know. Uh, and really, um, what I like to see us do in the future is not necessarily just have these big events where you have to plan it and you have to invite people and everything, but um, you know we want people to feel comfortable to post on the Facebook page or the group and say, hey, you know I'm going to grab beers tonight. Does anybody want to come? Or does anybody want to come play you know, Mario Kart at my place this weekend? Or um, you know something that's more casual. So it's not like you're always having to plan out these these big events, but we want you to, we want to encourage people to 
reach out to the group as just a cool group of people that have this you know awesome shared experience that um, you can draw upon to come out to different events and hang out with. Um, and I think that's something that um, a lot of us don't do right now. Uh, it feels like it can just be big events, um, but it's not just that, right? We have the um, occupation to be able to uh, put on these big events, and that's great because we have the infrastructure and we have the funding. Um, but we really want to encourage that grassroots part of it if it's just, you know, going to go out and get dinner with some cool people. Yeah. We used to have a thing called the show <laughs> where we had uh, Undokai type of little, you know, games or sports uh, activities between us and other groups such as the the J the Japanese English uh, Toastmasters mm -hmm. and uh, you know it so little activities like that. The trophy is still living at my house. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if anybody wants to. Something like that, that would be great too. Yeah, we've done some joint Namikais um, uh, with other, like the Japan Society, that was pretty good. Um, actually, I just completely forgot to even talk about what the picture is. So, um, the one kind of the personal pet project that I'm trying to head up is, is getting the shamisen scene started in the Bay Area. So, I picked up shamisen when I was in Japan. I'm still, you know, very, very beginner level, but there's actually a small group already of people in the Bay Area that play shamisen and other Japanese instruments. Um, and they're, they're really, really good, but they didn't have any kind of organization that they can play at or any way to connect with other people. So I've been working with them to hopefully, um, you know, put on some Jap some uh, shamisen performances or other, you know, traditional Japanese music performances. Um, we can put that as sort of a, you know, a JET event. Um, I know that there's other JET alumni that play these instruments. Um, you know, we want to encourage people to, um, you know, listen to this music. A lot of people, if you listen to the music, you think, oh, that's really cool. I want to go to Japan. How do I go to Japan? Oh, you can do JET. Um, you know, there's, it, it all feeds into each other. Um, so I've been working on this uh, for a while, just on my own, my own accord. And the, you know, the JET AANC really allows you to do things like that. Um, you can join our chair committee. So we have, um, again, kind of you know the various uh, uh, committees that help run the organization: um, communications, finances, membership development, information technology, community outreach. Um, you know, sub chapters are South Bay, East Bay, uh, San Francisco chapters. We have a scholarship, um, recovery assistance. There's lots of different ways that you can get involved with the organization of the chapter itself, um, uh, which leads right into other leadership opportunities. So you can become an officer, um, you know, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, um, committee chair, board of directors, um, the JDA, USA country representative. Um, they're currently working really hard on, on making a, a stronger JDA USA right now, and, and hopefully in a year or so, they'll have done that. And at that point, I'm sure there'll also be other positions opening up um, as well. Um, and as Mark said, it looks really, really great on a resume. Um, so we actually have, uh, uh, it's now 2,977 jets that are on our uh, register. So 23 more. Um, and uh, at that point, I'm going to go ahead and pass it back on to Mark. Uh, so uh, we're almost. Uh, to the end of the presentation, um, but I did want to talk a little bit about uh, the bigger picture, and uh, there's some. I want to share with you some really exciting things that are happening uh, in the jet world, in the jet alumni world in general, but also some other uh, big picture ideas, uh, just to get your uh, brainstorming going. Uh, the first is, as, as Andrew mentioned, uh, we have a grant from the U.S.-Japan Bridging Foundation to uh, hire a project director, which we have, to look, about the, look at the feasibility and then the practicality and then the implementation of a true official national organization, which is very, very exciting. So. Um, I'm privileged enough to be on the working group uh, for that, and uh, anyway, you're going to see a lot more uh, related to this, but again, uh, so often our chapters are kind of like little islands, but uh, this would be a great way to tie us all together and really make us uh, a national force. So this picture was taken uh, in D.C. Um, I promise I'm looking at her sheet of paper there. And uh, <laughs> this is... Uh, 
basically a, a conference uh, that they hold every year of organizations that are involved in uh, U.S. and Japan educational exchange. So the State Department was there, very high officials at uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs on the Japanese side. Uh, just every high-level organization you could imagine. And we were there for the first time, Jet AA. And what was amazing is you had about, I don't know, about 50 people in this kind of UN-style conference room and they had a little microphone that you had to press a button to speak and a little light comes on and all that. And but at one point, after we introduced ourselves, we said, well, you know, how many of the people in this room are, are Jet alumni? And like 80%, of the, to me it seemed like 80%, but it was like 60, 70%, everyone was laughing because none of us knew that we were, you know, we're all alumni. So anyway, there's you're part of that network, and you have connections to these people, you know, and you can become these people as well. So anyway, that's a kind of bigger picture thing that's going on that you can get involved in. Uh, I talked about this already, but apparently, you know, there's obviously many ways that you can uh, continue to help Tohoku. This is an idea I had um, just beyond Tohoku. Um, it's a grim reality that uh, Japan faces natural disasters all of the time. Uh, even my own beloved Aso uh, region in Kumamoto had terrible mudslides that killed about uh, 20 people uh, this, this summer. And so it, it was kind of an idea that gelled in my head that we could have a, a kind of a clearinghouse uh, to connect a JET alumni who want to contribute to these local disasters in Japan, and it would be a really direct way that we could uh, try to help help Japan. So if you're interested in that, let me know. School visits, it's something we used to do. Um, it's something that the consulate would love for us to do again. We can partner with the JCCC, which does it, Japan Society, but actually going to the school, seeing some cute uh, American shogakuse, uh, you know, which I think we all loved and enjoyed when we were in Japan. Uh, we give back to Japan in so many ways, but we're really awful about tracking it. And so uh, AJEP came up with a, a little app where if you do something uh, you know, kind of charity related or community involvement, you can just enter in the basic data in the app and it compiles all the information and then pretty soon we're going to Claire and saying, oh my god, you know, we saved you uh, two billion dollars, you know, because it was all volunteer work for free that you would have had to pay for in promoting Japanese culture, for example. And then uh, the prefectures in Japan are really interested in reconnecting with alumni. And so, uh, it's a great way, you know, we all love our own prefectures. And so there's very little linkage though. And so if you want to be a liaison to your prefecture on behalf of the National Jet AA, you know, that's one example. Uh, so these are just ideas that are kind of gelling. And if you have interest, please let me know. Very quickly, um, I just want to give you a quick case study as to some, something that you can do if you have your own idea. So uh, I guess about three or four years ago, um, well, sorry, back up. When I was in Japan, I became kind of a kabuki fan, freak, otaku um, in Kyushu. And uh, when I came back, I said, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could kind of keep up with it? And then I found another freak. And then so that freak and I said, well, gosh, if we meet up and we kind of uh, watch and study uh, kabuki uh, video, we'll, we'll just put it out there. We'll see. You know, maybe there's some other freaks. And so we uh, held our first meeting at the public library just down the street from here. And the five people showed up. And we're like, oh, whoa, okay. So about uh, fast forward four years later, and uh, we now have like 30 to 50 people from the general public uh, show up to these classes that we hold throughout the year. And it's really grown into a really uh, nice, cool thing. Uh, and it just goes to show that if you have your own passion, you have your own interest in Japanese culture, if you put it out there, um, other people will be interested. So that's just kind of the, the key, if you're kind of thinking about how you can do more with your, your one of your passions. Um, you know, the things I've learned from this are start small and grow slow. Uh, identify that passion, um, which will keep you going. Find a couple other people who share it, put it out in the world, and grow it organically. And, you know, pretty soon uh, you'll have like a nice little program going. Okay, how can you get connected? And this is talking, you know, we're kind of in a digital world, so I think it's going to be focused on that. Obviously, the best is person to person, but, you know, 
join JNC, there's a join button on our website you can click. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook groups. Uh, and then uh, within the LinkedIn universe and Facebook, there's a groups that you can join. I, I can join a LinkedIn group just for Kumamoto Jets. You know, uh, you can join one for, you know, make one for East Bay alumni, whatever, you know. Yeah. I have one for nonprofits. Risa has one for nonprofits. So uh, there's a lot of different uh, ways you can get connected online with our larger network. In fact, uh, to compile that list of cool people, <laughs> I just went, I know a ton of people uh, just over the years, but um, I went through LinkedIn and you can actually select for like Jet Alumni in the Bay Area and then all these people come up, which you didn't even know existed out there. And then JetWit.com, how many of you know about JetWit.com? A few? Okay, quite a few. Uh, it was put together by an alum in New York. It is kind of the de facto website for you know, global JET alumni. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So if you haven't checked it out, do, do so, please. What are some of the resources that we offer? Um, and this is an area that you might want to get involved in just to help us build up our resources for other alumni. So we have a beautiful website um, that has a ton of information, uh, including a resources page with like hundreds of links. Uh, to Japan-related things in our area, organizations, uh, guard, Japanese gardens, you know, restaurants, uh, all whatever you can think of. So if, if you have a favorite Japanese thing in this area, submit it. Let's put it up on the website. Maybe someone else can will be happy to find it. Uh, we now have a career networking page, um, an activities page, JetWit, as I said. And uh, our national organization has a really nice web page now, too, that has a lot of resources.